Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the technical forum here at the group exhibit Hydrogen, Fuel Cells and Batteries at the Hanover Fair in the year of 2015. Every 15 minutes, you will hear interesting presentations regarding the hydrogen industry. For that, I invite you to have a seat. We have a lovely lady walking around to serve you complimentary drinks. Today's topic will be hydrogen gas purifiers for fuel cells. And for that, please welcome with me on stage Business Development Manager of SAES Getters, Mr. Marco Succi. Thank you for the introduction. So I'm going to cover uh, the hydrogen gas purifier for fuel cell uh, made by SAES. The outline, I will spend a few slides to present my, the company uh, with the main products. Uh, and then I will go into the details of the technologies uh, that we use for the purification of hydrogen. And I will cover mainly the uh, purifiers uh, that can be used for fuel cell uh, for the purification of hydrogen and the conclusions. So size pure gas has been in the business of gas purification uh, for 25 years. Uh, we make uh, gas purifiers based on different technologies and for all the gases used in the electronic industry uh, with a broad range of flow rate starting from uh, a fraction of liter per minute up to uh, 10,000 cubic meter per hour. We typically divide our products into two categories, uh, what we call the bile gas purifiers that are normally equipment for high flow rates, for flow rates ranging from uh, at least 20, 30 cubic meter per hour and higher. that are uh, relatively complex systems with dual columns suitable for continuous operation. And what we call point of use purifiers that are uh, relatively uh, simple unit, uh, basically a stainless steel canister filled with the active material that acts like a sponge in order to trap all the impurities. Uh, we also offer what we call uh, airborne monitoring contamination analysis that is mainly for lithography uh, application in the electronic industry, but might have a news also in fuel cell because it allows to monitor acids, bases, and organic contamination. The main market for all these purifiers is the electronic industry, uh, mainly silicon and compound semiconductor. Here is the list of the most common technologies uh, used for hydrogen purification. Uh, the top three are mainly uh, in the case of low purity level in the range of 50 or 80% uh, percent hydrogen, while the, the bottom five are more focused on gas with already good degree of cleanliness, let's say in the range of three, four nines, and allows to reach different degree of purity even down to nine nines. The, the purifiers that are manufactured by SACE are based on the adsorber purifiers, getter-based, and palladium purifiers. Here are pictures of the different technology. Adsorber and regenerable adsorber are using the same media. Getter is a different type that I will not cover because I don't think it is a suitable technology for fuel cell. And then we have palladium membrane that will be extensively covered. So in terms of adsorber technology, here are the main characteristics. They are very flexible in size, so we can supply units from a few cc per minute up to 2,000 liter per minute. Pressure ratings is uh, uh, basically any pressure up to 200 bar. Uh, they have a very low pressure drop and uh, minimal cost of ownership. Typically. Uh, once the expected lifetime is exhausted, the purifier can be sent back uh, to our factory uh, for regeneration. 
in this way, if you have a dual manifold or two units, you can always have one unit in operation while the other one has been sent back for the regeneration. In case of high flow rate, typically uh, we have systems that are based on the same technology, but they are based on two columns uh, with heater, valves, and microprocessor controlled in order to continuously regenerate the, the purifier and to guarantee uh, continuous operation for uh, many years. They are equipped with all the safety features, including alarms and leak detection system. In terms of performance, these purifiers uh, can basically remove all the impurities that can be a danger for fuel cell like uh, water vapor, CO, uh, ammonia, sulfur compounds, and hydrocarbons. They are completely transparent to nitrogen, methane, and rare gases. Uh, they are suitable when the hydrogen purity is typically 3 ninths or better. Again, the, the, the pressure drop is quite low. And for the non-regenerable uh, unit, let's say the room temperature column, the typical lifetime that we have seen in the field is between one and three years. But once again, they can be regenerated. Uh, now I have some data that we have obtained with these type of purifiers. Uh, this was obtained with a very special type of mass spectrometer uh, that is particularly sensitive. And uh, you can see that all the impurities that are uh, efficiently removed by the purifier, like carbon monoxide, moisture, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, are well below one part per billion. While nitrogen is uh, in the range of 20, 30 ppb, that was the concentration in the inlet uh, hydrogen. Uh, this chart is showing basically how water vapor and oxygen increase uh, in a cylinder uh, when you consume the, uh, the hydrogen and you have a decrease of the pressure in the cylinder. We were monitoring water vapor and oxygen at, for half an hour at the outlet of the purifier and for half an hour straight from the cylinder and keep switching uh, between these uh, two analyses. And you can see here, this is the trend of water vapor uh, when the cylinder became empty. And this is the trend of the water vapor when you pass the same gas to the purifier. So you can immediately see that as soon as the pressure in the cylinder was less than 40 ppm, there is a substantial increase of water vapor that increased from, let's say, 3 ppm up to even uh, 6, 7 ppm. Uh, if you have a gas purifier in line, you always get the same type of, in, of concentration down to uh, very low PPB. And the same is true also for oxygen. Here is uh, a, a similar type of trend, but where we were monitoring hydrogen, uh, where we introduced on purpose some uh, 10 or 20 ppm of oxygen and water vapor, and again, you can see that when the purifier is in operation, you always get a very low concentration uh, of hydrogen and water vapor down to just a few ppb when the inlet concentration was in the range of, let's say, uh, a few ppm here and about 15, 20 ppm here. Uh, this is a test showing uh, the CO removal. Uh, this uh, was based on a gas chromatograph. Uh, we were introducing on purpose 7 ppm of carbon monoxide. Uh, the capacity is really uh, very high, so the, the test went on for several days. And here you can see the increase uh, of CO at the end of life of the purifier. So uh, this point here was when the uh, CO concentration was 200 ppb. And here is the bypass of the purifier. So you can see the, the, the inlet in the range of just less than 7 ppm. This is uh, for ammonia removal. Uh, again, we introduced uh, ammonia in the range of uh, just less than 1 ppm. And as soon as the purifier was set online, uh, we were able to reach the background of the analyzer down to low ppb. 
and this is for sulfur. Uh, we use a chromatogram with a, a chemiluminescence detector, and uh, this is the spectrum at the inlet side of the purifier with a substantial amount of uh, hydrogen sulfide that was introduced by means of a, a certified cylinder. And the red line is the reading at the outlet of the purifier showing that uh, both sulfur compounds were completely removed by the purifier. This is just to show the different option in terms of flow rate that we can provide. So we go down from 0.5, progressively increasing up to uh, 400 uh, liter per minute. The other technology for hydrogen uh, purification is based on palladium membrane uh, in the shape of uh, cylinders. It is a very uh, thin uh, um, membrane in where an uh, hydrogen is the only molecule that can permeate across the membrane. So it means that when we flow the hydrogen with impurities inside this cylinder, we have the hydrogen permeating through the membrane while the impurities remain on the inlet side. So by collecting all the hydrogen passed through the membrane, it is possible to generate high purity hydrogen. With this technology, uh, we remove all the uh, impurities removed by the adsorbents, but also nitrogen, uh, methane, and even rare gases. Because uh, once again, hydrogen is the only impurity, it is the only gas that can permeate through the membrane. So this is uh, uh, compatible uh, for a hydrogen inlet purity of 3 ninths or even lower grade. Flow rates are available up to 110 cubic meter per hour. It is necessary to have some pressure at the inlet of the purifier in order to force the hydrogen through the membrane. So it is typically necessary to have between 5 and 10 bar pressure drop. Uh, it has an unlimited lifetime because there is no consumption. It is a physical barrier. And about 2-3% of the incoming hydrogen is lost to remove the impurities from the purifier. These are a couple of pictures of the purifier. This is what we call a single uh, membrane, uh, which is suitable for flow rate up to uh, 40 cubic meter per hour. And this is a, a double uh, membrane. This is uh, a picture showing uh, the capability of the purifier to remove carbon monoxide. So the red line circles are the, is the concentration at the outlet of the purifier, while the blue is the inlet. At the beginning, we were flowing uh, clean hydrogen. And then we, op we introduced a high concentration of CO in the range of 70 ppm. And that was then increased up to 120 and 140 but this had no impact at all on the CO concentration at the outlet of the purifier. And this is another chart taken uh, with the very sensitive spectrometer that shows that all the impurities, uh, nitrogen included this time, uh, are typically well below one part per billion with this technology. So to, to summarize um, what we can offer for fuel cell, uh, we have uh, high capacity sulfur traps uh, that are suitable to remove uh, concentration starting from 10, 20 ppm. Uh, we have uh, adsorber uh, that are suitable to remove CO, water vapor, uh, sulfur compounds, ammonia, again down to uh, less uh, in the low ppb region palladium purifiers, and we are also under development uh, a solution that should be uh, a low-cost solution uh, to be able to handle concentrations uh, of impurities in hydrogen up to 20-30%. So to summarize the reasons to have a gas purifier for fuel cell, it is mainly because it can protect uh, the fuel stack, uh, which is the expensive stuff, uh, from poor quality batches. 
It can give consistent quality of hydrogen. It improves the quality of, of hydrogen. And uh, uh, maybe <laughs> we have no data yet. It could improve the lifetime of the, uh, of, the la of the fuel cell stack. To conclude the presentation, uh, we have technologies that are already capable to generate hydrogen purity complying with the ISO specification for fuel cell. Uh, we believe that uh, if hydrogen purification should be included in the supply of hydrogen to improve uh, the reliability of the system and uh, dedicated, unit, uh, dedicated purifiers uh, can be developed. In order to reach this target, of course, we should have good cooperation between all the providers involved in the hydrogen supply chain uh, because it is necessary to minimize the hydrogen delivery cost. And uh, we are also available if anybody is interested in understanding a little bit more what is the impact of impurities on the fuel cell, we are ready to cooperate. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Marco Succi. Unfortunately, we are running out of time. I have time for one question. Is there any question here? All right, for, for more detailed questions, where can you be visited? Where is your booth? B34, right here. B34, so big hands for Mr. Marco Succi.